I get a buzz from using a very cheap, almost worthless lens and making images from it. There's something I enjoy about specifically not using a very fancy piece of kit and making a really nice image with it. Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. Vintage lenses are getting more expensive, right? Well, yes they are. And in a lot of cases they're getting really expensive. Some vintage lenses are now practically unaffordable. But what if I told you there was a whole class of vintage lenses that are not getting any more expensive? In fact, they're getting cheaper in many cases. And it's a simple case of supply and demand. Those that are in demand become very expensive and those that are not so much in demand don't. So today I'm going to be making the case for 70s kit zooms like this Pentax that I've got here. This is the Pentax a zoom 3.5 to 4.5 28 to 80 millimeters so this is a really versatile lens it's great for all sorts of photographic occasions it can do portraits it can make background blur it can do wide shots it can do architecture shots it can do a whole range of stuff that you know makes it a really really versatile piece of glass there are loads of others that you can use too there are kit zoom lenses from all the major manufacturers of the time olympus pentax uh, nikon canon et al and there are also a lot of third party uh, zooms as well in this class and these lenses were all made for the cheaper end of the market and you know they were often people's main lenses and they served for pretty much every occasion you know holidays um, the occasional wedding people shots family shots days out all of that sort of stuff they're often a bit big these lenses are often a bit big this one's quite large they're often a bit clunky and they're often a bit worn as well this one well it's it works okay works nicely if i just sit it on my shoulder there but you know things are not quite like they left the factory it's got some wear on it it's you know not quite as fresh as it once was but really that doesn't matter because this lens makes some really nice images and i've had a load of fun with it too always remember of course that it's the photographer that makes the shot not the equipment that they're using images from these kit zoom lenses will be no worse necessarily than those made with a very fancy lens a very fancy lens might be technically better in fact it probably will be technically better but it won't make you any better images because of that the trick is to learn to see so why not use a kit zoom well one reason that you should i think is because they're really really cheap this lens i've got here oh my script's blown away well that wasn't part of the plan but anyway as i was saying one reason that i think we should use them is because they're very very cheap like this pentax i've got here this is a really lovely lens I've been having loads of fun with it it's i think i've already said it's 28 to 80 3.5 to 4.5 and this lens came bundled with another pentax lens a pentax a 50 mil lens and both of those lenses together cost me 30 pounds so this one cost what i don't know 15 pounds 10 pounds next to nothing these are really really cheap lenses um, they're sometimes worn, they're sometimes in as new condition. I recently bought a Miranda 82, I think it was 150 uh, mil lens for £10. 
that lens had hardly ever been used you could see it was just pretty much brand new as it left the factory still in the box that was a 10 pound lens so these lenses are the really the cheapest end of the market you will encounter and they're really no worse for that this one for example is pretty sharp at both the wide end and again at the long end there's really good sharpness good resolution plenty of detail it doesn't really give away anything very much to more expensive lenses in the sharpness department there may be a difference if you really look up close if you're going for pixel peeping but i couldn't see any difference in day-to-day -day use between this and really much more expensive lenses so it's at least in the same ballpark as sharpness goes as far as sharpness goes and of course stop it down and it'll get very sharp indeed it's got great pentax color it's got the pentax house style those really sort of vibrant colors of the later pentax lenses not the pastel shades of the earlier takamars the m42 takamars but this has all the later uh, color resonance and saturation that those pentax lenses had it's got really good contrast contrast is pretty strong it does drop if you catch the sun at the wrong angle it will just sort of wash out but that's nice for if you want that washed out look you can achieve it that way by putting a bit of sun in the frame or you can use a hood and every vintage lens i've ever used does this one be, uh, does that uh, washes out a little bit in the sun so there again you're not losing out really anything to much more expensive lenses now one of the things that we like vintage lenses for one of the reasons that they're so popular is because they give you loads of character unlike a modern lens modern lenses are designed on computer all of the faults and quirks and problems that used to be devil and plague lenses designed by hand are designed out on the modern lenses and the result is that they have a fairly bland fairly uniform sort of look well now with vintage lenses that's very different what we get with vintage lenses is lots and lots of character because of quirks and foibles uh, and inconsistencies in the calculation of their visual formulas that's what produces the character you'll be glad to know that these lenses don't lose out in the character department these lenses have plenty of quirks and foibles in fact because they're cheaper lenses they probably have one or two more so you can be reasonably sure of a couple of extra optical flaws over the fancier lenses that are going to give you loads of character in your images bags of personality and quirkiness and uh, your images are going to look very interesting as a result one thing sometimes people want to know about these lenses is can you make blur with them the answer is yes you can make loads of blur with them as much blur as you like these are slow lenses there's no doubt about it and at f3.5 at the wide end my pentax here is not going to make very much blur but if i open up the aperture as far as it will go and go to the long end then i'm in the area then i'm in the range where i can start getting some blur so the way to get blur with these lenses is open up the aperture as wide as it will go go right to the long end of the lens and stay as close to your subject as you can and you will get bags of blur as much blur as you like and it's going to be nice blur as well very characterful remember those flaws i talked about you can see that in these lenses these lenses have the kind of flaws that produce just astonishing looking blur blur that back in the day was considered not to be of the highest quality is now considered to have an aesthetic value and these will give that to you in fact even at some distance you will still get some blur with this lens this lens can still give you separation even if you're some way away from your subject up to about gosh 10 15 feet you'll still get some separation with an 80 mil 
make it zoom really quite something so you know if you've heard that you can't get background blur with these lenses not true you can get as much blur as you like and it's very groovy very cool looking blur with that real aesthetic twist that is so much appreciated by photographers uh, nowadays shooting on mirrorless cameras are these lenses technically poor well in specification i suppose they are they're pretty slow they're not top of the line lenses the very finest materials are often not used in their construction so yeah in that sense what you might have heard is true these lenses are technically inferior to fancier more expensive lenses no doubt about it but in terms of optical performance I really don't think they are these are high quality optics made for the cheaper end of the market you know there's no less lesser quality about these lenses than there is about any other Pentax lens of the time it's just that these were made for a certain market they were made uh, as quite slow lenses and so they had a cheap price because of that but they weren't sold as bad lenses nobody ever bought one of these thinking they were buying a bad lens so optically they're really really nice and they do make some fantastic images they're unlikely to out resolve for example a Carl Zeiss Jena Pancola but then very few vintage lenses will almost no vintage lens will out resolve uh, those CZJs so you know this lens really isn't on its own there so technically I don't think there are any worries at all so there we are that's my defense of vintage kit zooms vintage lenses that are not only not getting more expensive but in some cases are actually getting cheaper now that's a vintage lens worth pursuing now I don't and I don't know about you but I get a buzz from using a very cheap almost worthless lens and making images from it there's something I enjoy about specifically not using a very fancy piece of kit and making a really nice image with it but maybe that's just me I don't know these are worth trying if you've never tried one try one out I, I assure you you will have fun with it it will cost you next to nothing and it will make you some great images so that's it I guess from me for now I do hope you've enjoyed this episode please don't forget to like subscribe and of course ring that bell before you go many many thanks to our subscribers thank you for subscribing and for showing us your support for so long I really do appreciate it it really does mean a lot so many many thanks to all the subscribers thanks also heartfelt thanks go out from me to all patrons patrons who've been with us for a long time patrons who were with us and then decided they didn't want to be with us anymore thanks for your support patrons have just joined us everybody who's ever been a patron and continues to be a patron we could not do this channel could not do what it does without you so once again thanks for your support and if you enjoy the content on this channel consider becoming a patron yourself you can do it over at where is it now w w patreon.com forward slash xenography that's where it's at ah oh, my memory uh, and you can do that for as little as one of your earth dollars per month that would be appreciated so that's it from me for now. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time for some more Xenography.